I was in Arizona, and I had given the instruction of what we're going to do, and I began to teach. And people were standing up, and I'm saying, I bless you in Jesus' name. And more and more people were standing up. And in the midst of the crowd is a ba Southern Baptist pastor of a 7,000-member Southern Baptist church. He, he, doesn't, he told me later, he said, I didn't like your message. I thought it was showy. I thought, who does he think he is? And I'm judging what's going on. I said, how many of these people are really being healed? Or how many of them is just psychological suggestion? And he said, I was really not happy with you. And as I'm sitting there judging you, I had this strong impression, stand up. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, God, he's, I don't even know if I believe this, stand up. Lord, he, he said, if you feel the, I don't feel anything, stand up. Lord, he said, if you're sick and need healing, you feel the anointing, I don't have anything wrong with me, stand up. Lord, and then I, then I heard centurion. And I realized that the Lord wasn't asking me to stand up for my own need, but my stepdaughter, who was severe schizophrenic, who was, was spending up to 180 days a year in the hospital, in the psych ward, who was also anorexic and was also severe obsessive compulsive. It was for her. So I stood up. My wife looked at me and wondered what was going on. I said, it's not for me, it's for Cindy. He went and got Cindy and brought her back to the meeting. And in that meeting, she was healed of schizophrenia and was restored to a normal life. And he said, oh, how did you pray? Well, I wasn't the one who prayed. It was the pastor of a small church of 40 that prayed. How did he pray that, that she was healed of schizophrenia? Well, it was something like this. He walked by and he said, I bless you. And she fell on the floor. When she got home, she felt like the Lord said, anoint yourself with oil. The only oil she had was some type of seed oil, grape seed oil or something like that, rake seed oil, something like that, weird stuff. And she put it all over her head and then all over her body. Spirit of God came on her and she cannot get off the floor all night long. She laid on the floor and trembled under the Holy Spirit all night. And the next, now she, this woman had graduated with the highest SAT scores in the state of Arizona had just finished college, Virginia, when she realized that she was coming down with schizophrenia. And she had degenerated to the point that in three years, she had not been able to speak a complete sentence. So the next morning, she calls her mother and says, Mom, hey, this is Julie. I just wondered if you and Dad was going to come over and pick me up because I really want to go to this meeting and I really want to be there. And I just wonder, could you come over and pick me up? Now, her mother's saying, it's truly, she's talking in sentences. And, and when the doctor at the, at the big Baptist church saw her, he went over to his parents and said, what happened to her? So having said all that, I want to re re reiterate, that was the story, but it's actually what I'm believing God to do. And I want you to believe. I want you to enter into this time as a holy moment, expecting the presence of God and the gifts of the Spirit and gifts of healing to come. And to stand up, if God begins to touch you, because, I, I mean, I'm not making the rules. He did. He didn't say anybody that wants healing, have them stand up. He just said, those who feel my anointing, have them stand up, and you bless them when you see them. I, I bless you in Jesus' name. He's, he's, he's in a hurry. He's already getting started. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you in Jesus name I bless you in Jesus name I bless you in Jesus this could be longer than an hour I bless you in Jesus name I bless you I bless you and you and you bless you bless you bless you I bless you I bless you you bless you bless you this supposed to be honoring the word I haven't even got to read a verse yet I bless you in Jesus name I bless you bless you bless you bless you I bless you bless you in Jesus name 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 for those of you that's that's watching by uh, and you in Jesus name by what's it called podcast or what video streaming listen if you're watching it by, at your computer and you begin to feel the anointing I want you to do something that's weird even though nobody can stand up I want you to, nobody can see you I want you to stand up as an act of faith watching at home I just felt like God said I'm going to heal people at home that's watching on computer and so those that's watching by by the streaming 
I want you to stand up. And then at the end of the message, when we find out how many get, got healed, all of you that gets healed on the computer or however you're watching it, I want you to give your testimony too. I bless you and you and you in Jesus' name. And, and I just, by faith, bless those that are standing up in front of their computer and feeling really weird. I bless you in Jesus' name. Pray that you would receive your healing as well in the name of Jesus. I bless you in Jesus' name and you in Jesus' name. So now I want you to check your bodies out. If you had something that you could tell you were healed because the pain left, the freedom of movement came back, you can do something you couldn't do before. If any of those things happen and you know that you were healed um, and you're at least 80% better, would you stand up now and wave both hands over your head? Everyone that stood up, if you received the healing and you're at least 80, I want you to stand up and remain standing for a moment. Remain standing. This is the way you're giving glory to God. Just remain standing. Keep waving. Now, before you sit down, how many of you had your condition for more than 10 years? Anybody? And there's something you could not do. You're in pain. Or now you can. Pain left or you got freedom of movement. You had it for more than 10 years. Hey, what was wrong? I had a bad shoulder since high school, so I've been out of high school 15 years, and it doesn't click anymore, so. <laughs> Thank you, pain? Lord. Did it hurt? Did it hurt? I didn't hurt. I just, it, I've had a lot of disc problems in my neck for probably 15 years, and the fire God just hit it, and a lady behind me gave me a massage. She had a word of knowledge, and it got freed up and loose, and all the pain's gone. Oh, you've had pain for 15 years? All the time? Well, not, not all the time, but a lot. Um, at nine years old, I was in the hospital with my first of many, oh, wow, I'll cry, uh, many hospitalizations for lung problems that they couldn't diagnose, they couldn't figure it out until I was 38 years old in 2006 when I was diagnosed with a rare lung disease, lymphangiolyomyomatosis, say that twice. And that was no longer, <laughs> <laughs> no longer able to work and um, started having lung collapses. And let me tell you that when you can't breathe, there's nothing scarier than not to be able to get oxygen in your lungs. And I've had seven chest tubes. Less than a year ago, they put me on oxygen 24 hours a day. I've been attached to this stupid leash here for a year now. And tonight, God just spoke to me, Zaria. Baby, these new lungs right here. I've been telling people for three years, you're going to see me on TV one day talking about the new lungs God gave me because I don't want a transplant, Lord. And I, I admit it, I'm afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid. I mean, deadly afraid of transplant. And when you can't breathe because there's so much blood in your chest, and you go to the hospital, and they say there's nothing we can do. You know, there's only one answer, and my God is bigger than lamb. So you've had that for one year, for one year. I've been on the oxygen for just over a year, since November of last year. And, you know, I was sitting over there thinking, you know, I'm so tired right now. And I feel like God's just saying, you're tired because, you know, I'm taking things out of here that don't belong. And you're going to get some really peaceful rest. And, you know, there's still a little pain in there. There is. There's some pain. And I'm still having a little bit of problem breathing, but I, I feel it. I can see it in my mind's eye. I see it. I'm so sleepy right now, but I really wish I could just run up them stairs right there because that's how I feel. All right, come on. Hallelujah. Okay, Chad, watch Rose. Okay, so you said that 
um, people with metal in their bodies. And I've had metal on my legs since um, I was a baby. And, um, and I was, like, sitting there, and I was receiving prayer. And, like, dude, I'm, like, feeling my legs, and I don't feel any metal. And my legs feel so different right now. It's amazing. <laughs> I don't feel any metal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.